Okay, in example three, again, we see that there is a denominator right here in the middle that is not currently factored, and so we need to factor it. And it looks like I can take an x out of that, and it'll leave me with x plus two. So I'm gonna cross out the original denominator and put the factored version. And so therefore, my domain restrictions are gonna be that x cannot equal to negative two. That comes from this denominator and that denominator's factor. And then from this other denominator, which just says x, we get that x cannot equal to zero. Okay, so now that I have uh, done that, I'm gonna multiply both uh, denominators here, and I'm gonna multiply every term by x and x plus two. So when I multiply the first term by x and x plus two, the x plus two will cancel out, and I'll be left with three times x, which I'll just write as three x, Plus, in the second fraction here in the middle, both of the denominators are going to cancel, and so therefore I'm gonna be left with just six. And on the right-hand side, x is going to cancel. Uh, this and this are going to cancel, leaving me with three minus x times x plus two. And I'm gonna put both of those in parentheses because here in a second, I am going to foil them out. Okay, so that's what I'm ready to do now. 3x plus 6 is equal to 3 times x, which is 3x. 3 times 2, which is 6. Negative x times x, which is negative x squared. And negative x times 2, which is negative 2x. Okay, at this point, it's a quadratic equation, so I'm going to move everything over to one side. And uh, what you might notice is that both sides have a 3x plus 6. And so if you notice that, that can just cancel out immediately since you have one on each side. And then because these two things are negative, I'm going to move them over to make them positive because, as you guys know, I'm a positive person. And so that's going to give me x squared plus 2x is equal to 0. And now I'm ready to solve this quadratic. So... This is a factoring problem. I've got two terms that have a greatest common factor to them. And so I'm going to take out that greatest common factor. Whoops, I don't need not equals to zero there. Sorry, just equals to zero. And then that's going to tell me that x is equal to zero and negative two. But if you look back, both of those are actually extraneous. And so what does it mean if both of the answers that we got are extraneous, well, it just simply means that this equation does not have an actual solution. And so that's going to be our response to this particular equation. And so, yes, it is possible that you might not get any extraneous solutions. See example one. You may get that one of the answers extra or is extraneous, but that the other one is actually good. See example two. And then you might see a case where both of the answers that you get are extraneous and that would be what happened here in example three all right one more example here for your notes just so that you can feel totally comfortable in this particular case i see only one denominator it looks totally factored so i'm good to just write my domain restrictions x is not equal to negative four and then i'm going to multiply by x plus four to the entire equation Okay, so x times x plus 4, nothing's going to cancel out there since there's no denominator on that term, plus 1 over x plus 4 times x plus 4 is going to just leave me with 1, and then 0 times anything is just 0. All right, I'm going to distribute my x. That's going to give me x squared plus 4x plus 1 is equal to 0, and so now I'm ready to start solving this quadratic. If you try to factor this, you'd be looking for factors that multiply to one and add to four. And since the only two factors of four are one and one, that's not gonna work. And so this problem cannot be factored. You've gotta use either completing the square or quadratic formula. Now I use completing the square a lot, especially whenever that term right there is even. Um, so I would highly encourage completing the square here um, because it's easier, in my opinion, than quadratic formula. But since I haven't used quadratic formula on any of the notes, I'm gonna go ahead and use it on this example. So the quadratic formula says that x is equal to the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a 
times C all over 2 times A. And so this is going to equal to negative 4 divided by 2 plus or minus the square root of 16 minus 4, which is 12, divided by 2. Now I need to continue simplifying here. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 12. Well, 12 is 4 times 3. Now, just real quick, it's also 2 times 6, but 2 or 6, neither one of those are perfect squares. So I don't care that it's 2 times 6. The reason I chose 4 times 3 is that 4 is a perfect square, and so this becomes 2 times the square root of 3 divided by 2. And so those 2's are going to cancel, and that's going to give me the two answers, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Neither one of those is extraneous, since neither one of them equal to negative 4. And so there are my two solutions.